India is the largest country to produce generic drugs globally, contributing to 20% of our international export. Indian pharmaceutical companies has a wealth of experience manufacturing drugs according to the global standards that they already possessed. They have effectively controlled and monitored the quality of pharmaceutical at all levels. Every drug must go through checks and approved by authorities before they can be exported. India's economic factors favour the industry as they are capable of producing low-cost drugs. Economic factors such as cheap labour, low wages and low resources costs such as water and electricity. India has the most U.S. food and drug administration approved plants outside of USA. 1,400 World Health Organization Good Manufacturing Practices approved farmer plants and 254 European Directorate Quality Medicine approved plants. The government encourages multinational corporations to enter the industry through lowering regulations of entrance. This can attract potential foreign investors to boost its economy. Furthermore, India set up National Institute of Pharmaceutical Education and Research to widen the pool of scientific talent to supply the ever-growing pharmaceutical industry. Indian pharmaceuticals increased from 6 billion USD in 2005 to 36.7 billion USD in 2006, and it is expected to reach 55 billion USD in 2020. The overall industry of doctors' facilities is relied upon to increment from 31% in 2009 to 26% in 2020. Therefore, hospital sectors of pharmaceutical markets is expected to rise above 20% and reach 14 billion USD by the year 2020. It's just me. Complicated standards in insuring patent has prevented multinational corporations from producing new drugs, resulting in a decrease in foreign investments and lack of confidence from investors to enter. World Health Organization revealed that 25% of drugs manufactured in India are counterfeited, which will affect the reliability of the industry. Ranking 94 among 174 countries in the Corruption Index is a detrimental figure for India to attract foreign investors. India's conflict with its neighbours affects the political environment greatly. If the situation deteriorates, it can cause disruption in India's economy. Child workforce in India has involved almost 5 million children. This is harmful as it allows unfair competition through exploitations. And the informal economy is harmful in the long run. India can work closer with the United Nations Global Compact to benefit the aspects of human rights, labour, environment and anti-corruption. It could implement policies as imposed from Washington consensus, which enable greater trade and investments. In conclusion, with an abundance of opportunities coupled with cheap resources costs and highly skilled professionals, the future of India pharmaceutical industry is bright.